I think if something happened to Mark, I may opt to live alone or at least try it. I don't know. Many people who leave comments are enjoying this living alone lifestyle. And we're so excited to share some of what we found out about living alone after 60. Okay, well, so for those of you that don't live alone or don't want to live alone, that's me. I don't think I could live alone. Yeah. I really don't. But having said that, working on this video, I do see the benefits and I feel energized about the prospects of possibly living alone. So like if you decided to throw me out... <laughs> And we had to do these videos from two houses. We could do that. Yeah, that'd be, be an interesting channel. Things would change a lot. But there is a lot of upside to living alone as we age. And we're going to cover all of that today. You know, there are some disadvantages, but many of those show up near the end of life. So today we're going to share how to thrive and live in the moment after 60. All right. So embarking on this journey... It's really about embracing the fact that you are alone and you can take advantage of the full spectrum of what life offers, right? You don't have someone uh, to tag along with you, someone to guide, someone to say, do you want to do this? So it's a time in your life when you can grow, you can connect with people, and you can live each day with purpose. You know, when you said that, I thought to myself... You know, you said someone to guide, someone to ask, do you want to do this? Gosh, you know, you also don't have to say, what do you want for dinner? Like the worst question of the day. Well, right? I ask you that every day. Every day. So you don't want dinner anymore? Well, I just, how about we just, one of us just makes dinner that day. Okay, you can make dinner tonight. <laughs> Listen, if you currently live alone, we want to hear from you. What do you like about it and what do you struggle with? We can help each other through this YouTube community if we all open up and share. Now, we do hear from some people about this idea of living alone. For instance, some people say, this wasn't my choice. I lost my wife or my husband and I can't find a way forward. Well, that, that issue itself needs to be dealt with for sure. It's not an easy and it's, one. It's not an easy no. one. But you still may find a few ideas today on what your first move could and should be. We also hear often, you know, my biggest stumbling block is finding friends. A lot of the my friends are still couples mm -hmm. or coupled up. And what I would encourage you to do is look on our website, you know, and look on this YouTube channel. Because we have multiple videos on how to make new friends as you age and how to find community. And that, I think, would be a great place to start if that's one of your stumbling blocks. Cool. Now, if you're new here, I'm Mark, and this is my wife, Jody. And we don't focus on the financial aspects of retirement, but rather lifestyle, health, wellness, relationships, and more. So please hit the subscribe button. But even more importantly than that, leave us a comment. We want you to engage with us. And also forward this video to someone in your life that you care about who's on the same retirement journey as you are. You know, um... Thinking about this topic, about living alone, I think about my pop. Um, mm -hmm. You know, my pop lost my mom seven years ago. Can't believe it's seven. It's been seven years, and we lost her to uh, pancreatic cancer, which was devastating. And um, I will tell you, seven years later, I don't know that uh, my pop has taken a lot of steps forward without her. He, well... I mean, he's trying. He's trying, and he was down visiting with us two weeks ago, and we didn't talk specifically about living alone, and, you know, he's sad about it, but we did talk to him a lot about kind of, um, what did we say? Jimmy 3.0. Now, it's been seven years, you got 20 years ahead of you, this is a time when, and we're going to talk about some of this stuff today, to get out and exercise, go out to dinner with your friends. Really take advantage of the fact that you're mobile and you can still drive and get around and you're still somewhat healthy I think and get I'm, healthier. Yeah. But he, it, you know, he, it's hard to get, I guess may, maybe your point was, it's very hard to get out of that slump, that sadness about being alone when you were with someone, the best love of his life right. for so long. Well, and I also just think it's, you know, inertia kicks in, you mm. know, maybe not the healthiest routines kind of, you know, coupled with inertia, lack of motivation, you know, uh, but we're going to talk about some of those things today. So definitely stay and listen. Yep. Now we have a download in the link below and it's solo travel agencies. So if you are solo and you're thinking of traveling, I think there's five or six travel agents in there that specialize in trips for people that wanna go on trips alone. 
Did I say that? You did. I did. Yeah. Okay. So why don't we jump in? And we want you to stay to the end because here's what we did as part of this video. We found the best um, five cities. Cities. Best five cities in the U.S. to live as a solo retiree. And on top of that, we did some research and found the best foreign countries to live outside the USA. So when I say I couldn't live alone, one of the things I might do is go to one of these foreign countries for a little while. Oh, really? That was if something drastic, terrible happened hmm. to you. Not if you were still alive. Okay. I would just be begging for you to take me back. Crazy. Okay. So let's talk a little bit about uh, the things that you can do if you find yourself in a position where you are living alone. You know, and the first thing that you can do, you know, is a conscious decision to embrace your independence. You know, celebrate your ability to make your own personal choices. If you'd been in a relationship for many, many years where you were always kind of bouncing off, you know, questions, choices, where you, where you go, what hobbies you do, and those type of things with a partner. You know, now is a good time for you to rediscover hobbies that align with your true self. And when I think about that, I, I you know, I love to paint, and I haven't painted in probably 10 years. Yeah. And I love to paint, but with Mark and the business and all that we do in a day, I don't have any time for it. That's probably something I would pick up as an independent solo retiree living alone. Well, okay, I want to I want to expand upon that in a way. You said embrace your independence. Mm -hmm. I want to say it like this: embrace your independence. I mean, honestly, I'm listening to you and I'm thinking this is all about mindset. You've got to make the 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 realization you are alone. And I'm going to be like a little bit of a hard ass here. So deal with it. Just enjoy it. Embrace it. Do what Jody said. Transform your living space. Experiment with cooking. Explore new recipes. Plan your days around what brings you the most joy. Yeah. I mean, I think just be up and positive and happy about it. And try to just get over the sad part about woe is me, you know, I'm lonely, I'm this. Gosh, just take the time to really grow as a human being. It's it's harder than you're making it out to be. I know. And neither of us are doing it. So the credibility for us to say, just get up every day and have a positive mental out attitude, you know, I challenge you a little bit on that. Well, that was my shot to inspire everyone who's watching. Okay. Because I just, I, listen. But I think it's important just to know, like... We know it isn't easy. I mean, we have loved ones that are struggling through okay. it. Okay. Well, I told you that I would not want to live alone. I'd struggle with it. But at the same time, I do enjoy when I'm alone for two or three days. Yeah. And you're going to be alone for two or three days mm -hmm. in the future, and I will. So anyway. So the second thing to do, again, with this positive attitude and this high energy, is really work hard on creating and cultivating a really great social network. I mean, you can go back... To your high school friends, you can go back to college friends, work friends. That's going to be on you. But you know, I've got some high school friends that go back. I don't know, fifty years. Yeah. And we've reconnected, and there's just something special about those kind of people that were very big in your life back then at a very young age. And even though you haven't seen them in twenty, thirty, forty, fifty years, there's a connection there. And I think that. You know, th that's one thing to do. The other thing is just to engage in community events with like-minded individuals if you have hobbies or something like yeah, that. Yeah, I mean, that leads to even pursuing volunteer opportunities, you know, feeling connected and feeling valued. But really, the idea is to cultivate this robust social network and use technology to maintain connections across all distances and even reconnect with people. Well, you know, it's... I mean, technology is bad on a lot of fronts, but it's good on the connection You can front. use that to find people. But then, geez, get, get, get in your car and drive and go see someone, to get, meet someone for dinner, um, drive back to where you grew up and spend a week in a hotel and hang out and meet people, go to your favorite restaurants. There, there's a lot to do to connect that way. And I think even with family, you know, that old saying, you can pick your friends, you can't pick your family. Gosh, you know, your family is really core to who you are. And maybe you need to work a little bit on repairing some relationships. It's true. Instead of just lamenting over the fact that you don't. So right. creating a robust social network is really important and will make living alone that much better. You know, the third area is to really take this time to prioritize your health and wellness. 
you know, focus on maintaining both physical and mental health at the same time during this phase of life by developing consistent, enjoyable exercise routines, which may include, you know, the prior topic, you know, being in an exercise class, creating community at the YMCA or, you know, your gym of choice or your boot camp of choice or your cycling group of choice or your running group of choice. I mean, there's so many ways that you can create community and prioritize your health and wellness during this time. Yeah. I don't think there's a video that we don't mention the importance of exercise. And I, you know, that should be on every video that should be on everyone's mind when they get up in the morning, what am I going to do today to exercise? So it's really important. Get some exercise, eat right, go see your doctor. I mean, go research and look for things inside of you that need, that need to be fixed. You know, I have a friend who says, you know, why go to a doctor and look for trouble? Why go to the dentist? You're probably going to get a cavity. You got to get all that stuff fixed. Yeah. Now's the time to do that. And the other thing to do about your health and wellness, and we could, you know, we have videos on this that go really deep. This whole idea of meditation at this age, I really think it's critical to think about that. Jot that one down and make and research it. There's some great apps out there, but that really will help you in this stage, living alone, you can meditate. No one's going to bother you. Think about it. Mm. Right? Yeah, except the Amazon guy at the front door. The Amazon guy is a problem. All right. <laughs> so here's another area where you can use to thrive living alone after 60. Lifelong learning. I mean, the first thing you did when we left our career, you weren't living alone, but you went back to school. Yeah. And you took this great course down in Philadelphia. You took it online. It was, um, what was it? Applied Uh, Positive Psychology. Applied Positive Psychology. That changed you. You Mm -hmm. learned all of these new techniques. You you had a community. You read all these great books. Listen, go into online courses, go into the library, join a book club or discussion. I think it's a great way to thrive if you're living alone. Yeah, I mean, no doubt it's time to really challenge yourself in these areas you know, with, uh, you know, book clubs, group discussions, or even puzzles and games that you can do, you know, a lot of them you can do remotely now. Mm -hmm. I mean, your mom used to love as she aged to play Scrabble with the kids. And now you can actually play it, you know, online, you know, with different players in different cities, but just finding a way to challenge yourself. And, you know, finally, if you're in a city or a town or a village where there's cultural events, exhibitions, lectures, You know, I am always a proponent of college towns are the best towns to be in because Mm -hmm. they always have this type of energy and the lifelong learning piece. You know, it's funny, as as an aside, last night we went to the Marco Island Chamber of Commerce monthly meet and greet. We'd never been. We have a business here on the island and we thought, well, why don't we think about joining the chamber? It was like reminded me of, you know, 30, 20 years ago when we used to go to networking events. Yeah. People would come up to you and say, you two are new here. What do you do? Right. And it was kind of fun. And we met some nice people. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. But it took effort. We've been down here for three years now. We've never done it. Right. So it took some intention. And you even said yesterday, you sure you want to go? I said, yeah, let's go. Yeah. And I'm glad we went. So. Yeah. So the next thing you can do and make sure that this is kind of at the top of your list, it's in our top five, is really make a plan for your future. Taking steps to ensure your future is secure and fulfilling. So that's just not only financial planning, but organizing your documents and legal affairs definitely plays into it. Investigating your living arrangements, you know, and your long-term security in either your current or future living arrangement, just to give you the peace of mind. And always, I think, an important part of your plan, especially if you're alone, is to establish a circle of trusted advisors for all the needs you might have moving forward. You know, I think those are really important points when you're alone, making you feel more secure and less alone by being planned. You know, uh, this has me thinking, planning for the future. I love that you mentioned housing because, you know, we said earlier in the video, some of the some of the problems or issues or concerns or risks of living alone start to happen as you age. Who is going to take care of you when you really need someone to give you the kind of help that you need? Is it a nursing home? Is it a family member? I don't know, but that's important to plan. The other thing is legacy. I don't know if we talk about that enough. And, you know, my book just came out, The Evolving Man, Life Virtues Men Don't Talk About. And there's in there uh, talking about gratitude, humility, kindness, love, all of that. But the very last chapter is on legacy. 
And in there, I give the reader an exercise on how to write a letter from your future self at the age of 90, thanking you for all that you've done for that future self in the way of health and wellness and relationships and lifestyle and everything else. So thinking about your legacy as you're alone, you know, you've got time during the day to do things. Start that as a project. Yeah, and that goes in that big bucket of planning for your future. Yeah, yeah, so I think that's uh, that's good. Another thing you can do to thrive in this time is really make an effort to create and foster a sense of community. You know, we did that last night by going to the chamber meeting. Yeah. we. You've got a Bible study group. We've got... There's other... I've got my ladies' golf. You have, have your ladies' golf, group. the pickleball group. Drinks in the driveway you know, group. Yeah, that's building a sense of community. So it's not just one-on-one, but it's a, a group thing that people come together and you spend time together and you, you, know, you share your stories, you share your struggles, you share your wins. I think that's really good. I do too. And a lot of faith-based organizations provide community opportunities to not only do things at that location, but even community gardening projects or reading projects or, you know, uh, toy drives or whatever it might be. So just putting yourself out there. And that's one of the things I think we need to push on with Pop is really getting him to get himself out there. He's got a lot of time and a lot of talents. And, you know, he's rich in both of those things. And he could share those in community environments. Well, I know we're talking about him a lot. I'm not even sure if he watches these videos. But if you're watching this, Pop, here, you need to be around people. And you blossom when you're around people. You hold court like no one else have ever known. So you've got to find a place. And if you're the same way, if you're that type of person that loves to be around people, then you need to do that for yourself so that you can thrive. Yeah, definitely. The next bucket is to master new technologies. You know, staying up to date with technology and remaining connected to be informed is really important at this stage of the game. You know, learning to use all the different apps and platforms that keep you in touch with loved ones can only enhance your relationships. So exploring, you know, technologies that can enhance either your safety, your well-being, your networking, you know, there's no reason not to explore them and, you know, do the free trials on some of the apps. I mean, most Apps give you seven days or 10 days before you have to pay for it. The other thing in this mastering technologies, I would say, is I have a lot of apps on my phone that I used five years ago before we retired that I've just forgotten to get rid of. You know, mastering new technologies, I would put slash clean up your old technology. That's a good idea. I like that. Because, you know, I'm getting ding for, like, example, Grammarly, you know, which is an app that helps you with grammar when you're you writing. You don't use that anymore? I don't. I don't write a lot of memos anymore. Hmm. So I looked at it and it just came up for renewal, like, I don't know, two ninety nine a month or something. It's not like it's going to break the bank, but I was like, I don't need that anymore. I have parking apps from places we lived two houses ago. Well, they don't cost anything, but they're clutter. But they're just they're clutter. cluttering your yes. phone. Yeah. yeah. Well, this idea of mastering two, two, uh, two, mastering new technologies, I'm going to use me as an example. I'm 67. In a couple of weeks, by the way, in case anyone wants to send me a birthday wish or a gift. Tax day. Income tax day. 67. I'm learning Instagram. I'm, uh, what the hell? All of this. Canva. Canva. I'm learning uh, later where you post. Mondays. A m- a Monday. You know, all of the technology around this business, but all of the social media stuff we're learning. How to, how to take video, how to cut video, how to put labels on video, how to speed video up. I never knew how to do any of that right. stuff. And I'm 67. So I say to the other day, we're honestly looking to hire someone to help us with that. And we keep ending up with like a 20-year-old. And I'm like, they don't really get our, our uh, mindset. They don't mm. get what we're trying to do. They could do the social media quicker. But I'm looking for a 65-year-old that knows all the same stuff I do. That, that or as a quick learner. I it's mean, a quick I, learner. So this is, don't sit home and, and think you can't learn it. It's right. not that hard. It just takes a little effort. Yeah, absolutely. I got excited about you that. You did. You did. Now All listen, right. don't forget to stay till the end where we're going to give you five cities to live in as a solo retiree and five of the best foreign countries that we've researched that we found outside of the uh, outside of the U.S. The countries is really interesting. I think the cities the are cities really are shocking, really shocking to us. And But you know, I listen... 
Some of them I don't want to go to, but oh. it. But what? You wouldn't even want to try them. Too cold. Oh, <laughs> I don't want the cold ones. <laughs> All right. So here's another area where you can grow and thrive if you are living alone, and that's to nurture your spiritual life. There are so many advantages to connecting with a spiritual community, which would be a church, let's say, any faith-based or a organization, synagogue, or whatever your religion is, to, to the physical structure where the people are. Try a few. I mean, I remember we went church shopping years ago. We tried mm -hmm. like six churches and landed in one. Right. But nurture your spiritual life. Explore and deepen your beliefs. What happens to you when you die? Will you be reunited with your loved ones? Those are great questions. So let you me know, ask you that the question on this one, because nurturing your spiritual life in the context of solo retiree mm -hmm. or retiring or living alone after 60, I, I think it would be the same for anybody, not just specifically for solo retirees. No, but let's say that you uh, want to, let's say that you wanted to nurture your a spiritual life mm -hmm. and I didn't want anything to do with it. Okay. It's just a little harder. Like you right. say to me, look, I'm, I'm going to be joining this group. I'm going to do a Bible study. I'm going to go to church every Sunday. I'm like, well, what about me? So I think the issue is if you are alone, what's so funny? <gasps> what about me? Yeah. What about me? Yeah. I'm here. Yeah. I, I don't want to go to church. Yeah. So what are we going to do? What about me? That's yeah. Mark. That That's day. The, what about me? <laughs> that, okay. That's my middle name. Markham. What about me? Rollins. Listen, if you're by yourself, this is the point of this video is. Do you understand? You on the same page as me? I, I get the it. The point of this video I, is helping people thrive if they live alone. I get it. There's no anchor. Okay. And anchor. All, what? I'm an anchor now. No, God, no. Oh, I'm the anchor. This is on. This is evolving so, into something completely. So different. the next thing is, if you are living with someone, throw the anchor overboard, and then you can live by yourself, and then you can have all this fun stuff. That's not a nice pop. All right. Nurture your spiritual life. Enjoy it. Embrace it. Use the time that you have to meet people and dig deep on your faith. Okay, so the next one. That, okay. Yeah. This, what's this video about? The, the next one is um, invest in your hobbies. So, you know, what does that mean? You know, dedicate time to hobbies that interest you and make you happy. You know, explore both sides of your brain. You know, the active hobby, you know, pickleball, golf, tennis, you know, bocce ball, whatever it is. And then also the left side of the brain, right? The arts and the crafts and the gardening and the creative pursuits. You now have time and hopefully the flexibility to use your whole day working both sides of your brain. So your newest hobby that you are so passionate about is golf. Mm -hmm. And Jody's golf here in Florida is, her ladies group is Wednesday. Wednesdays. And that's sacred. Nothing comes before that ever, 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 except last week there was something. I think we traveled. We, we were out of we town. We were stuck in Dallas. Oh, yeah. But that's important. You know, we don't live alone. Sometimes we live alone. I'm just <laughs> thinking about it. Sometimes, you know, you can be lonely and live with someone. It's All not right, the same thing as It's not the same alone. video. So invest in your hobbies. If you were alone, you'd probably play golf twice a week. I would definitely play more You'd probably practice golf. more. I would definitely you'd practice. You'd probably want to get better. You'd probably play in tournaments. So, I'd probably take some lessons, which yeah, I could or use. Or painting or whatever it is. But our neighbor across the street, she's a big... Watercolor, clay. Uh, clay. She has all this sculpting. stuff. She's married and, he's, and they're both together. But gosh, if you're alone, jump into it. Make it a big part of your life. Invest... Right. Invest time in this. I think it's. I think it's a great opportunity for you, and it fills your time, and it gets your mind away from being alone. You're probably the hardest time might be dinner time. That I think for me that would be yeah. the tough time of day for me. Like who am I gonna have dinner with? Right. But anyway, all right. Another area, if you are alone, is to embrace solo travel. Now, we did a video on that. I don't think we recommend that at the end, but you can search our channel for that, and we also gave you the PDF of the travel agents. But this is a great time to go to Europe, to do a, uh, go to Africa, go to South America, go to the Grand Canyon. And instead of traveling alone, you will be alone, but go on trips that cater right. to solo travelers. Yeah. You know, a lot of uh, travel agencies are really focusing on individual trips 
you know, men individual trips, women's individual trips, mixed company individual trips, hiking trips, walking trips, spiritual trips, yoga trips, health and wellness trips, golf trips. I mean, you know, uh, what was the one we looked at? Bicycling through Italy trip, yeah. you know. And that, you know, while it's fun to do, to bring someone along with you, if you were to do it alone, you wouldn't be the only person there alone. And I think that creates a lot of immediate community and potentially lifelong friends. Yeah, I think I think that because, you know, the other thing is I'm thinking, I want to go to certain places and you want to go to other places. Mm. For us to find the place we want to go to that we both want to go to. It's a little bit of a challenge sometimes. So yeah. take advantage of being alone and go where you want to go. Okay. And it could be, you know, if, even a weekend away in Vermont, wherever you live. Drive three hours. See, Mark, immediately Vermont comes to mind. What immediately comes to mind to me? Don't know. Greece. <laughs> you can't drive to Greece no, but for I, the weekend. Okay. You're right. I could fly. Where would you drive two hours away? From here? Yeah. No, two hours away. I'm still in Florida. Okay. You go I'd to probably go Miami. to Miami. The Keys. Oh, the Keys. That's four yeah. hours. That's oh, okay. Take okay. the boat. I could take the boat. Go to the Keys for the weekend. There you go. All right. Embrace solo travel. Make it fun. The next thing, I, I love this one. So I really want you to listen. You know, maintaining a balanced lifestyle between healthy activity and healthy relaxation. You know, setting routines for yourself that include time for rest and time for activities. You know, as we started this video, we were kind of joking with each other. You know, in my opinion, Mark's a jammer. He likes to jam stuff in between everything else. And I did that for 35 years in my career. I was, you know, balancing being a mom and, you know, running a big business. And I don't want to jam anymore. I actually carve out time in my day for rest, reading, and then my activities. You know, if something happens to me, you're going to miss the jamming. You think I'll miss jamming? You'll miss jamming. I don't think I'm going to miss jamming. <laughs> yeah. But I don't want anything to well, happen to you. That's not the point. Thank you, sweetie. But, you know, this this phase of life, you can learn to say no and avoid overcommitting yourself. You know, so it's not like, oh, Mark signed us up to go to the Chamber of Commerce meeting last night. After coming back from playing 18 holes of golf, having lunch with my ladies, hadn't showered yet, didn't walk the dog. You know, I'm thinking to myself, last thing I kind of want to do is go to that. But you committed us to it. Well, I gave Had you I an Had I been out. alone, well, I probably would have said, so, eh. so I think there's two things here. One is learning to say no, which right. I was about to say, and you stole that from oh, me. Oh, I didn't mean to. Learning to say no. The second thing is put up boundaries. You know, to have a to maintain a balanced lifestyle, you have to have boundaries with friends and family and commitment. So you have to be careful with that. You don't want to be overcommitted. Right. So I think that is important. And last night I said to you, if you don't want to go, that's fine. I know. And I think if you're living with someone, I think really coming to an agreement and understanding that there needs to be alone time. There needs to be things that I do and there needs to be things that you do. Right. And in between all that, we jam. Yeah. Okay. All right. I think this next one is the most important. Oh, wow. Well, not the most, but it's up there. Top five. Creating a comfortable home environment. If you've lived alone for 20 years or 10 years or two years, this be a great time. Because what, what do we have left? If you're 60, 20, 30, 40 years maybe, make your home comfortable. Repaint it. Get some, get some new furniture, some, some gently used furniture. Get a new TV set. Make it comfortable and bright and uplifting. Get a comfortable chair you can read in. Um, get a new bed. I don't know. I think, I think looking at your home and cleaning it, and we did a ton of videos on decluttering, downsizing. You should watch those if you're thinking about it. They, and they had great reviews, great. I mean, I, I don't know how many tens of thousands of views they got. But this is a great time if you're living alone to do a major clean sweep. I think what do you think? I think if you're newly solo, so I think back, you know, on my pop and... I think he went five years and my mom's coffee cup stayed right by the sink, you know? And so I know there's, you know, a, a reticent to like change things because, you know, a lot of times your living space reminds you of the person that you may have lost. 
and it makes you feel closer to them. So, you know, while I agree with you, creating a comfortable home environment, you know, and then keep pieces that are sacred to you that remind you of a time when maybe you were, you know, living, you know, with someone, a partner, a spouse, you know, something along those lines. But I do think it's important to decorate your space so it reflects your personality and interests and where you are now. And I really pushed my pop to do that, you know, with my mom's passing um, because it was just so familiar all around him. It was hard for him to get comfortable in her space. Well, I want to say something because I want to make sure we're clear. This is not a video for someone who just lost a loved one. And this is the way to make everything right. I mean, you've got to mourn. You've got you've got to deal with all that. But there's got to be we're just trying to give you some hope that there is a way through your your loss and on the other side there's a way you can thrive by yourself and i think that i just wanted to make that statement that i don't want to take lightly at all if you just lost a loved one i mean that has to be horrific horrific so anyway what's up that was no good. No, that was great. I, that was all about a comfortable home environment. I know. I know. The I, next one is a little more clinical, which is, you know, make sure you've built and are continuing to build your financial security. Now, you know, we don't do anything around finances, but it's important that you manage your finances to support your lifestyle and your future needs. And that's the bucket you really need to spend some time in investigating. What are going to be your future needs? Creating a budget that reflects your current and future goals and seeking any financial help to optimize your retirement savings. I think when you check that financial security bucket as a solo retiree, as a person who's living alone, I think it adds a lot of peace of mind to people once they can check that bucket. Yeah, and you know, if you are um, recently uh, alone, there's a great um, uh, app that we, not an app, a program. A platform. A platform, new retirement platform. And it is a dashboard where you connect all your bank accounts and your credit cards. And it gives you the most amazing reports that you can share with your accountant and your financial planner to see all of your income, your expenses, and your assets in one place. So that link will be below as well. But really, having financial security is important. And if you're Absolutely. not sure about it, you have to get clarity. You need to at 60 or 65, sit down with your accountant or a financial planner and figure out so you know what you can do and not do. Right. And the best thing about the new retirement platform is that you can run scenarios. You can run a bunch of different scenarios depending on what the market's doing, Mm -hmm. depending on where you want to invest, depending on how much money you have, depending on what's coming due to you. So I think the scenario planning there is really important. All right. So now this next one is the most important. Oh gosh. Why is it number 14? Well, this, they're in a certain order. Okay. But I want to elevate this. We didn't put this in order. This is the number one thing or two that you need to do, and that's stay physically active. And don't tune out because we said it before. This, I think the most important thing all of us can do at the age of 20 or 30 or 40 or 60 or 80 is to stay physically active. Our bodies are geared to get exercise and to work. We start losing muscle mass at the age of 30. So if you're 60 right now and you haven't worked out in 10 years, that's okay. Don't be hard on yourself. But bring physical activity into your daily routine. I'm telling you, your body itself will thank you. Yeah, and low impact options are great too. Walking, swimming, yoga, stretching. You know, but remember it's very important as we age to wrap muscle around your bone because you don't want to live solo and have a fall And be that person, I've fallen and I can't get up. And going to the gym solo, there's classes, you'll meet people, get a trainer, ask the trainer to introduce you to people. A lot of these new gyms have, um, what do you call it? Boot camps? Well, no, uh, food, uh, uh, snacks. Oh, smoothie bars. Smoothie bars, you know, the right kind of food. You can have a nice light lunch or something. Just staying physically active. And if it starts out as just walking in the morning 10 minutes one way and then you come back, build on that. We did that with Pop. We did. Every morning we walked. We did. And we went from 10 minutes to 12 to 18. I don't know if he's still doing it, but gosh, you have to move. Yeah. And if you're by yourself, it's just, there's no one to slow you down. No one to say, no, you can't go. I don't know if you remember years ago, there was a Nike commercial um, where the woman was laying in bed and, and you hear this sultry voice say, don't get up. 
Stay in bed. It's so cozy in the bed. It's warm in here. You don't want to go run. Do you, do you remember that commercial? No, but why don't, we, why don't we, you try that tomorrow? Well, no, it was the pillow. She was in bed by herself. And it was the pillow was trying to get her to stay the in the bed. And the idea was she put her foot down and said, let's, you know, just do it. And she yeah. got up and she like threw the pillow down and took off. So she was alone, but it's hard to get motivated to stay physically active when you are alone. It's easy to go sedentary. You have to really fight that. We've done a lot of videos on this too. And I think, I don't know if it was Brene Brown or someone who's got this thing. Get up in the morning, open your eyes, three, two, one, feet on the floor, stand up. That's the first thing you should do because that's how you get going. Then you go to the kitchen, you do your coffee, you go to the bathroom, whatever. But if you're going to lay there and scroll on your phone for an hour or turn the TV on, you're not going to get physically mm. active. It's going to be too hard for you to go from that sedentary lifestyle to walking. So, Now listen, don't forget, stay to the end. We have five cities in the U.S. that are great for solo retirees and five of the best foreign countries to live outside the U.S. over the age of 60. I'm going to give you a, a hint. One of the countries is Costa Rica. And that's like an up-and-coming place. Is that a hint, or did you just give it away? Did I give it away? Yeah. I'm telling you, <laughs> Costa Rica, there's a lot of good stuff going on in Costa Rica. I know a guy and his wife, a 10-year-old and a 5-year-old child, they've been there for a year. So they're younger, but they left their careers and said, we're going to go to Costa Rica for a year and just see what happens. You've never even been. I know. Well, yeah. maybe if I'm, again, if I was solo, what I say in the beginning, I'd probably go to a foreign country. Huh. So I'm search researching, okay. just in case. Mm -hmm. Always wondering. All right, the next one is a big bucket, and it, we've touched on it here and there, but developing a strong support network is really critical. You know, identifying and strengthening relationships that have supported you in the past, will support you in the future, cultivating your friendships that provide good emotional and practical support, and connecting with professionals who can offer advice and assistance. I think that third one connecting with professionals is something that we should do more promotion of mm. because i think that a lot of us especially if you've had a tremendous career and then you find yourself in retirement and then maybe you find yourself as a solo retiree you kind of wall yourself off to looking for help because you were the person that helped everybody so, but but it's okay to seek a professional that can so, offer advice so what does a what, what else does a strong support system look like I mean, there's uh, community centers, there's the gym, but what is, are these people that like you can talk to, like good friends in a book club, or is this, is this more one-on-one, -on -one really good friends where you can share what's happening and they're, they're there for you and they help you? Is, it, is that I, what you mean? I think it's all of the above. You know, it's been proven that every community that has a YMCA or a YWCA, the community support programs are far better than communities that don't have either one of those. Well, you and, know. and so, I mean, you can go to the Y for, you know, your gym, your activities, your community. They do workshops. There's always learning and development. There's usually a kid's center if you want to be around younger people. I mean, I don't know. I'm a big fan of the Y network in this I, area. Well, we belong to the one here. Maybe that's why. Get that? Why? Got it. Why? <laughs> uh, so they must have, pro we don't look for it, but they must have programs for solo people. Singles, not 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 like dating or dancing or whatever. But if dancing if, could be fun, dancing. Um, if you are a living alone, I'm sure they have these community groups like lunch for solos or something. Well, I know, and you Marco, get to meet other people who live Marco, by themselves. We do. I mean, there's yeah. lots of you know uh, new to Marco, ladies on Marco, Marco men's groups. There's you know all sorts of groups that you can find. So it depends if you find the right community. I think you can find the people. Good. All right. So if you're living by yourself and you're 60 and you want to thrive, you want to really crush the rest of your life, think about a second career or volunteering. But I like the idea of a second career. Hmm. You may or may not have some previous experience in some field or with some tools, whether you were an accountant or something, but gosh, getting some part-time work or volunteering using those skills to get fulfillment and engagement in a community, I think makes a lot of sense. I mean, Absolutely. We, we, again, we don't live alone, but we started a second career and we volunteer. But if you're by yourself, it's a great way to, to get up in the morning and use some of your God-given talents and the skills that you have. 
One of the ladies I played golf with yesterday, 76 years old, um, had already she's had open heart surgery. She lives alone. She's part of our um, ladies golf league. She was a teacher her whole life. Fifth grade, sixth grade, fifth grade, sixth grade, you know, teacher, mm-hmm. Indiana. And then she retired, came down here. She, uh, there is a network that you can go to online and she can see all the schools mm-hmm. and she can see which schools need substitute teachers. Really? And at 76 years old, she picks a school, she picks the grade, she goes in and she teaches. She goes by herself? By herself as a substitute teacher. So You probably don't even need like special credentials you for do. that. I oh, you do. I asked her that. Oh, you do. Um, so if you were a teacher, you can credential in. If you have a degree in certain topics mm-hmm. or subjects, you can also just go online and offer to help. Hmm. So she said for her, that was exploring an option, more like consulting or freelance work, where she's not tied to it, but if she looks at her week and she sees she has two or three days, she pops into a fifth grade class up at Manatee and she teaches the Hmm. kids and loves it. So there are ways that you can get involved utilizing your skills from the past. I love that. What a good idea. Yeah. Okay, the next bucket, we did touch on a little bit, practicing mindfulness and gratitude. I think it's hard sometimes, um, and again, I've seen it through some of our relatives who are solo, you know, to wake up in the morning and just push that positive mindset to the front, you know, with mindfulness and gratitude. So we've offered, you know, a journaling guide, you know, a start to your day with a gratitude journal, you know, an end to your day with gratitude about the day, acknowledging and celebrating your achievements, you know, and your growth. And it's okay to write that all down and get it out of your head and make it seem like, wow, I really did accomplish that today. We had dinner with a, a couple the other night and uh, the, the husband was in a horrific accident. 20 years ago. Horrific. I, I can't even describe it. You just couldn't imagine it. But during, during the time of healing, because it was um, someone close to him died and it was his fault. During the healing, when he get up in the middle of the night, he wrote down three things he was grateful for. And sometimes all it was, was the sheets on the bed. The power of really becoming a more grateful person right. by journaling every day Once a day in the morning, three things you're grateful for, or do it again at night or just at night. Find time to sit by yourself, get a piece of paper and write down three things you're grateful for. That is so powerful. And if you do it once and never do it again, it's not enough. You need to do it every day. How long could that possibly take? So you're living by yourself. There's no one around. You've got the TV. You've had breakfast. Sit down, have a cup of tea and write three things you're grateful for. And I would say go a step further. I, this is what I, I just put this in my Instagram post today. Oh, you did? Yeah. Uh, be grateful for one person. Be grateful for something in nature. And then be grateful for an experience that you had in your life that's a great memory. So you could do that every day. And the person that you are grateful for that you write about, call them up. Send them a text. Who's thinking of you this morning? How about that? That's a great idea. That, that and mindfulness, meditation... It gets you, then you're not feeling so alone, I think. You've got other people. Did I go off on a tangent? Kind of. But it's okay. Practicing mindfulness and gratitude is very important. I thought I was crushing it there. You were crushing it. Come on. (laughs) All right. Protect your health with preventive care. So as we're aging, we're all about preventive care. We're being really proactive with supplements and shakes and protein. I mean, we need so much more protein now. We don't eat that much food. I know. I mean, we we eat small little baby meals. So we have to supplement all of that so that our health is good. We take vitamins. I take a lot of uh, nutrients, spinach, and preventive care. So going to your doctor, getting your vaccinations, getting your screenings. Listen, our son, uh, Markham, who's 38, was diagnosed a year ago with stage four colon cancer, 38. So if you're 40 or 50 or 60, as, as we say, you gotta get your shit checked. I right. dare I said it on a video. Yeah. Preventive care, go to the doctor, make sure if you feel anything, like let's talk about what we, our bodies. Okay. Go ahead. What we feel, what we feel when we eat too much, what we feel when we drink too much. Right. Really getting to understand. And pay attention to your body. That's what I was hoping you'd say. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's important. I mean, the the preventative care that you can do now at 60 is only going to help you, you know, at 90. So uh, paying attention to your body, listening to your body, listening and learning about health trends. Colon cancer in younger men is a health trend. It's a negative health trend, but it is trending in the wrong direction. And women too. Right. I mean, if you're 60 and you have kids and they're under 50, research this. I mean, it's Listen, it's a big thing in our family now. So colorectal cancer is a real problem. And there's more and more young men and women getting it under the age of 40. But there are great pre-screening opportunities right. and options for you to do at home, talk to your health care provider. But that goes under that whole preventative care bucket. Um, so you live by yourself. You want to thrive living by yourself. Make sure you're healthy right. and make sure you're taking care of yourself. All right, this next one I love, which is foster intergenerational connections. Engage with people of all different ages. If you're 60, I know for me, I'm, you know, 58. I've got a 76-year-old friend I played golf with yesterday. I've got, you know, a young girl that I do yoga with that's 30. You know, so fostering those intergenerational um, connections is really important. Participating in community programs that encourage that is always helpful. And mentoring. You know, if you have skills, expertise, wisdom, share it with the younger generation. You'll get a lot out of it, and they'll get a, a lot out of it. We're flying to New York uh, in April to go to a breakfast for the Volunteer Spirits Award, which is an award they hold every year for Volunteer New York, which is a volunteer organization. They connect people with organizations with that, that need volunteers. We're filling a table of 12 with young people. Markham and Jen are coming. His friend Mike is coming. My godson is coming. We're inviting kids under the age of 40. We love hanging out with younger people. Yeah. Right? And I love hanging out with older people. Yeah. Well, we so, should I invite mean, some kinda, older people. That'd be kind of cool. I kind of go both ways yeah. on that. No, for I, sure. I, it's really important to do that. If you're living by yourself and you want to have some fun, find someone your senior and have coffee with them. Find someone younger than you and right. you mentor each other. It's pretty cool. All right. Here's one that is m another one of my top fives, okay? <laughs> I think you've had 10 top fives. I've had 10 top fives. Embracing change and being resilient. Change is so hard. I get that. There's there's this book called Who Moved My Cheese, by Gosh, the way. Gosh, that was like from the 80s. Yeah. We bought it for everyone in our company because every time we made a change in a company. I mean, I was in the company when we had to bring computers in. People are like, well, I, I don't understand all of this. Embracing change. Read this book, Who Moved My Cheese? It, it's, it's a fable. It's easy to read. It's probably only $6 at this point. I can't remember who wrote it. But it was, it was millions of copies were sold. Embrace change. You know, you've got 20, 30 years to go. Try something new. Try something fun. Don't be stuck in your old ways. Right, right. That's where people get a little curmudgeoned, I think. Yeah. Whether you're solo or in a partnership. But, okay, as promised, here are the five best cities we found with research to live solo in the U.S. Are you ready? Well, you know, I think I think the thing you need to research when you when you hear these cities, but but just having the courage to think, you know, when you think of these cities, maybe you know someone there, but if you want to move to another city too, you want to think about safety, healthcare, affordability, what kind of social opportunities there are. So maybe you have a college roommate that lives in one of these cities that yeah. you might want to go to. And those are the criteria that we looked at when we looked at these cities. Right. And your preference might vary greatly, but let's go to these cities and I think you're going to be shocked at what they are. Right. First one is Madison, Wisconsin. What? All right. Madison actually ranks high on a regular basis because of quality of life, healthcare services, and it has a vibrant community. I mean, I think, isn't there um, a big school there? Yeah. Which Wisconsin. One? There you go. University of Wisconsin. Yeah. Yeah. It's the highly educated population, great healthcare facilities. There's my stutter. Yeah. How that it has up. a plethora of um, cultural and recreational activities that are ideal for seniors, and it boasts a very strong sense of community, yeah. which can help mitigate loneliness. All right. What's the next one? The next one is Scottsdale, Arizona. I was not as shocked on this one. Yeah, I could go there. Scottsdale offers a warm climate year-round, and it's beneficial for those looking to avoid the challenges of colder weather. You know, it has low crime rate. 
And so it's a safe choice for people living alone. I think that's important. Since mm -hmm. this is about living alone, you want to go someplace that's safe, that you feel safe. So that's a cool spot. The next one I could never go to because I had kids that went to Penn State. So for me to pick Ann Arbor, Michigan, where the University of Michigan is, since Michigan and Penn State are big rivals, I would probably be thrown out of our family. But because the university is there, there's many lively cultural scenes and activities and they provide lifelong learning opportunities for singles or for for solos yeah you know what was i thinking about ann arbor michigan oh i couldn't cold. go because it's cold yeah it's out. <laughs> i couldn't go oh, I know it's what in I was the big thinking. 10. here's what i was thinking we've always said as we get older and when we're retired retired and we're really not doing this either is to go to a city that has a university. Big university, yeah. Yeah. Sh just, just has a vibe to it. It just has a vibe to it. There's mm -hmm. young people, there's good restaurants, there's there's education. You could always teach. I mean, either each of us could teach something, right? Right. I would think so. So, all right. This next one. Rochester, Minnesota. I that wasn't on my list it either. Wasn't on my list either. Now but we've met a lot of people from Minnesota say, recently. And they're the nicest people. Nicest in the people world. on the planet. You betcha. But the mail yeah, you betcha. The, um, the Mayo Clinic is there. So it's got world-class health care for sure. Right. So if you're older, as you get older, and you want access to really good health care, Rochester, Minnesota would be awesome. And the city is actually pretty compact, and it has a really good layout and yeah. a lot of cultural and recreational activities. It's just cold. Well, you know what's kind of cool? So we've given you four so far. Hopefully you've written them all down. Go visit them. Yeah. Get it's in a the good plane. Idea. And go there for a weekend, stay in an Airbnb, you know, check out the stuff. I mean, I, that's what I would do. The next one is near and dear to us and close to home, which is Sarasota, Florida. And Sarasota has a reputation for its beautiful beaches. It's got a great art scene and a very active senior community. It offers the warm climate with plenty of indoor and outdoor activities with a range of services aimed at supporting uh, older adults. I love going to visit Sarasota. And the other thing about Sarasota is Flor Florida's, well, everywhere is expensive, right? Mm -hmm. Um, where we live on Marco is pretty expensive because we're on an island, so everything's a little bit more. But Sarasota and Florida is a little bit less. They, I, I don't know why, but the cost of living is said to be a little bit less. So They, they also design their housing there with um, seniors in mind. So they have different housing options in Sarasota depending on what you're looking for. So right. that's one I would consider. So when we did our research, we plugged in a couple of things. Uh, solo retirees, we wanted good health care, we wanted... Pretty good weather. I don't know why the cold places came up, but it's well, not really bad. Beautiful weather for you yeah. know, a couple of months of yeah. the year. Yeah. All right. Let's now do the list of five countries outside of the U.S. that are really well known uh, as wel welcoming North Americans, affordable cost of living. Some of these are a lot less than America. Yeah, I, I would mean, imagine. Um, I spilled the beans on one of them. You did. Yeah. But I think that... Trying some of these really would be worth your, your to, again, take a trip and go visit. You yeah, never know. you know, um, the idea, and I know it's an idea you like, uh, you know, this idea of living outside the U.S. I mean, you know, if I were solo and you weren't here, you know, I still have six kids and grandkids. Yeah. It would be hard for me to say, hey, guys, I'm going to go to, for example, the number one place that we found was Portugal. You know, renowned for its beautiful landscapes and mild climate and great quality of life with low cost living as compared to the other Western European countries. And it, there's great health care in Portugal. Have you we know, been to Portugal? We have. We've been to Lisbon. Lisbon on that trip mm -hmm. to go see Jordan. Jordan, who mm -hmm. was in Barcelona. Barcelona. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Portugal. Bar I wouldn't go to Barcelona. Mm -hmm. Would you? I, I love Spain. Well, P Portugal is really nice and it has this region called the. Um, Algarve region, mm -hmm. and that's supposed to be absolutely gorgeous, and it's really popular with retirees because it has beautiful coastal towns, lots of golf courses, and amazing beaches. Yeah. So the second place, Costa Rica. Yeah, you've already mentioned it. Um, I, you know, there, Costa Rica is a thriving um, tourist center, so you can go there and spend an awful lot of money going to some amazing good places. But you can also go down market a little bit and go live in one of their great cities that has this laid back, um, what do they call it, uh, Pura Vida lifestyle right. or something like mm -hmm. that. Just laid back, happy way of living. Yeah. I've been there. You've not been. 
No. You um, went to a yoga retreat. I did. I went to a uh, seven-day yoga retreat there, and I, I really enjoyed it. I loved the people. I will say the beaches aren't like the beaches we're used to here. They're, the beach, uh, the sand is full of oil, so the be- the sand gets so hot. It's black, right? Well, it's not, dark. but it's dark. It's a dark sand, and yeah. it gets, I mean, it melts your flip-flops yeah. when you walk on it. So. You know, and that was maybe just one side of the island that I was on, but... Cool place to explore. It it would be a cool place to explore. All right. What about Spain? Spain, you know, I loved Spain when we went to visit. You know, it attracts retirees because of its warm climate, its rich culture, and there's excellent healthcare system there. And it's actually healthcare that's considered some of the best in the world is in Spain. Yeah. So if you're still on this video, and we hope you are, you know, dream a little bit. Don't, don't just say, ah, I can't live in those places. Even if you went for a month. I mean, if you're living by yourself, we want you to have the best retirement ever. Take advantage of being alone where you can be mobile. Find a friend to go. I mean, just because you live alone doesn't mean you can't spend a month living in a little Airbnb with somebody True. else. So True. anyway, all right. Uh, what's next? The fourth one is Malaysia, and that's becoming increasingly popular among retirees because it has modern amenities, the tropical climate, affordable cost of living, and there is health care and housing that is available. English is widely spoken because of its history of being a British colony. Yeah, so that's, yeah, it's kind of like, well, I've never been, but I imagine if it used to be a British colony, it has a lot of modern, um, Oh, Eastern, Western, Western um, comfort. Probably. I couldn't think of the word. You know, I've never been to Malaysia. But there is a site uh, called uh, Malaysia My Second Home. Hmm. And uh, that's a program that attracts long-term visa options for retirees. So they're really trying, you know, to get people to come as retirees. And it helps with, um, you know, helping you understand the culture, the food, and all of that. So the last place, the last country that came up on the list, and we we put through the parameters three times, and this kept showing up because you and I don't like this. Well, I, I'm we not, don't. We're, we're, I haven't had good experiences. But and, this is Mexico, and it's in Mexico. That's just my personal experience. Yeah. Hasn't been great in Mexico. But there are parts of it. There's mm-hmm. the Modern Elder Academy, Modern Elder Academy, run by Chip Conley and his team in Mexico. Mm-hmm. What town is that in? It's a cute little village. He talks about it all the time. Baja. Baja. And it's, um, you know, it's an option. I mean, there's parts of Mexico you don't want to go to. So you have to be careful. You have to do a lot of research to make sure that you, you go to a place where they have good hospitals, where it's affordable. It is close to the U.S., so that's it good is. if you need to come back. So. Anyway. So listen, when retiring, consider a broad options, especially as a solo retiree, because it's important to think about your personal preferences for climate, language, cultural activities, and, and accessibility to good health care. You know, visiting potential countries like Mark has mentioned a couple of times and spending some time there can be a valuable part of your decision making. Now, we realize that living alone is not for everyone, but if you're watching this and you're living alone again, the whole point of this video is to give you some hope and inspiration that you know what you can really live alone for the rest of your life and just have an amazing life we gave you 20 great ideas we gave you five cities in the u.s and five countries you can live in so we hope you really enjoyed this and go through the list and pick two to three areas you can really focus on and be intentional in those areas to make a difference now if you like this video this next one solo travel advice That's a whole video on how to travel, who to travel with, tips, safety issues, theme travels ideas. So watch this video next.